What's up everybody? Kendrick Dish here from Kendrick Dish Creative and also from Shoot For Results. Uh, I want to talk about the Fuji X-H1. But first, I got on a small announcement, some business to take care of. Um, last time, last video I did, I did a review of this bag, the Think Tank Perception Pro. And at the end of the video, I said I'm gonna give this bag away to uh, one of my subscribers. And now is that time. So the winner is Joel Bailey from Arlington, Texas. Congratulations, Joel. I will send you an email shortly. Um, and uh, just one interesting thing is there was 836 entries in that giveaway. So that's pretty cool. Uh, congratulations, Joel. I, I look forward to seeing how you use this bag. Uh, there's more giveaways going to be on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed and uh, let's get right down to the Fuji X-H1. Pretty sure I'm going to buy one. I mean, I do a lot of video and it's a video heavy feature set, so I don't know why I wouldn't. Uh, I probably would... I think what I might do is I might sell my X-T2, buy the X-H1, um, and that opens me up to be able to maybe buy the X-T20 and have that as my little tiny small camera. I don't know yet, we'll see. But let's talk about some of the features that I like about the X-H1. Obviously, the in-body image stabilization. That is what I'm looking for. I mean, hands down, that's what I'm looking for. It was something I was looking for before I bought the Fuji X-T2, um, but it, it wasn't the only thing I was looking for. But now that there's a camera from Fuji that has it, I'm very excited and I look forward to using it. They say it gets 5.5 stops of compensation, um, which is pretty darn good and should help out with just keeping things smooth. Um, and uh, since I shoot a lot of, I like to do a lot of handheld and I like to do a lot of run and gun style uh, video, um, I think it's gonna be great. I think, I can't wait to get my hands on it. The other killer feature that for me is really what uh, is almost like a, that just here's my credit card, is the, uh, the 1080 120 frames per second. That is another compromise I made when I bought the X-T2. It's something I really wanted and I was looking at the Panasonic GH4 and GH5 and uh, I decided to go Fuji because of the stills quality, but the 120 frames per second is something I really wanted and I'm really excited about in the X-H1. That right there, I'm just like, take my money. Um, also, they upgraded the uh, megabytes per second, the data rate, uh, up to 200 megabytes per second. So it's double what it was. And I think that's great. I really, I really want as much information in those files as I can get. Uh, you know, it, the 420, is not a deal breaker. I wish it was 422, and evidently you could output 422 via the HDMI signal, so I can use my Ninja, uh, my Atomos Ninja recorder, and, uh, and record 422. So it's not that big of a deal for me. Uh, I, I, I do wish it was built in, um, but it's not a deal breaker. You know, the other thing I really wish it had was a swivel screen. Like I'm, I like the flip out screen, either up or to the side. I think the little, Tilt mechanism is, is okay, it's fine if you're using, if you're looking at the back of the camera, which, you know, the majority of the time I am. But for filming something like this, I have to have another, another monitor set up top and eh, it's not that big of a deal, but I wish it just had the flip out screen. Be nicer, especially if I shoot on, you know, with it on a monopod and I'm just kind of trying to get um, like a crowd shot or something, just being able to, to look and see the framing from an odd angle or, or even like doing a, uh, tabletop shot or doing something real low to the ground, being able to flip that screen up is pretty good. But you can do that on this one. It's The Eterna film simulation does look pretty good. Uh, I'm not that great at color correction. I don't like to spend a lot of time on my color correction. I prefer getting it right in the camera or getting it pretty close in the camera. That's my preferred method. That's also just because of the kind of the work that I do. I'm not doing uh, super high-end stuff with this setup. I mean, I saved that for the for the big stuff with my other job. But like for you know YouTube videos and for 
vlogs and for some of the real estate stuff that I'm getting done. Uh, you know, color correction, it's, I don't have time for color correction. That's the bottom line. So if I can get something really nice in camera, that's what I want. They've made an effort to uh, allow you to switch back and forth between stills and photo and it remembers the settings. That was always one of the things that I'm, I find annoying is that every time you switch back and forth, you gotta reset all the settings. Uh, so the fact that it can remember what you had as your photo settings and then you can switch over to video and it has its separate settings. I think that really works well for a hybrid camera like what the X-H1 claims to be. Uh, the top LCD, the sub LCD panel with, with uh, information about what you're working on or like the settings, that seems great. I really like it. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna miss the exposure compensation dial that it replaces. And even so, I think I can just use the button and it's fine, no big deal. So I think it's a wise move, I like that. Um, so I'm happy with that. The size, you know, this camera is bigger. This camera is heavier. And that grip, that it's a much bigger grip. And that I actually like, I got big hands. And so these smaller little cameras are, it's sometimes hard, the buttons are, are sometimes hard to push. The, it's hard to get a good grip on it. Uh, so having a much bigger grip, to me, makes it feel like a more professional camera, like I can really get a good grip on it and hold it. The size and the weight are just things that I'm not, I don't care about that much. It, it, it's nice to have a small system, but I prefer having quality and a good grip. So uh, size and weight, not a deal breaker. This one has a better viewfinder. The X-H1 has a better viewfinder than the X-T2. Uh, I had no problems with the viewfinder of the X-T2 at all. It's a fantastic viewfinder, but now it's better. I like it. The touch screen, I'll tell you what, the touch screen is long overdue. Most can't, like I was using the 5D Mark IV the other day, and being able to swipe through your images on the touch screen, it's like, like an iPhone. Man, that is just a super nice feature when you're trying to show people their picture after you take it, you just swipe, man. Touch screen, that's the way to go. That's what we're all used to now. So thank you Fuji for putting a touch screen option in the camera, that's it's great. You know one of the things that, uh, that you have to give up with this, uh, with this in-body image stabilization, it, it takes up some of the battery life. So the camera X-H1 actually has less frames per full battery. I think it goes from like 340 to 310. So it's a minor, it's a minor issue. Uh, I'd ha I happily give it up. I, you, you know, I'm gonna be using the, the battery grip and it's got three whole batteries inside the camera at that point. So that's even more than what a lot of the other camera manufacturers have. So I'm unconcerned about battery life. Um, the fact that I can charge the camera with a, via USB with a, you know, one of those battery bricks, that's helpful too. So I'm just not concerned about battery life. I pr much prefer to have the in-body in image stabilization that uses up more battery than go without. So I'm really excited about this camera. Uh, I'm gonna probably pre-order it, you know, in a day or two. Um, everybody seems to like it a lot. I've looked at a lot of other people's YouTube videos. I looked at a lot of other reviews and, you know, a lot of other uh, spec sheets and stuff like that. And if it, if it delivers like they say it's going to, and from what some of the other people are saying, I think it's a home run and I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Can't wait to show some of the footage that I get with it. Um, let me know what you think. Are you gonna get the X-H1? Uh, are you gonna sell your X-T2? Are you gonna or sell one of your other cameras to, to get it? You know, I could keep my X-T2 and get the X, uh, X-H1, but I don't really need two cameras like that. I think I'd rather have like the X-T20 and the X-H1 and kind of have two, two use cases and carry them both in my bag. So that's probably the direction I'll go. Um, you know, let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. We're all excited. I think everybody's excited about this. So the more people comment, the more excitement we can build, the more Fuji's gonna listen to us. So anyway, just, you know, jump in the comments, leave a comment, maybe give a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you feel like it. And uh, congratulations to Joel Bailey for winning the Think Tank Perception Pro. And subscribe for more giveaways and more information about cameras and technology computers, software, 
the business side of media production, uh, and just a bunch of vlogs, a bunch of random stuff. See you guys next time.